This tutorial looks at the typical properties of metals and how these relate to their uses. It also looks at special metals which are called superconductors and how these have particular uses also. First you need to be able to explain why iron is used to make cars and bridges and why copper is used to make electrical wiring. The reason that iron is made into cars is that it's cheap and strong and it is malleable. That means that it can be bent into shape as these car panels have been. Iron is used to make bridges because it's strong. Copper is used to make electrical wiring for two main reasons. First of all, it's an excellent electrical conductor and secondly, it's flexible, which means that the wire can be bent around corners. You need to know some typical property words for metals. Lustrous, which means that it is shiny. Hard, which means that it isn't easily scratched. High density means that it has a high mass compared with its volume. High tensile strength means that cables can be made out of the metal which are strong and will not snap. High melting and boiling points means that a large temperature is reached before they will melt or boil. They're good conductors of heat which means that they will allow heat to travel through them easily and good conductors of electricity which means that they will allow electricity to travel through them with little resistance. Let's illustrate some of those properties now. So this necklace is made of a metal, silver, because it's lustrous, it's very shiny. This hammer is made out of high tensile steel because it's very hard. That means that the end of it, which is hitting the nail, will not change its shape. These weights are made out of a metal because the metal has a high density and therefore the weights are quite small and still have a high mass. This Land Rover cable is made out of steel because it's got a high tensile strength. That means that the cable can take a lot of uh, weight before snapping. This cauldron is made of steel because it has a very high melting point. The bottom of this saucepan is made out of steel because the steel is a very good conductor of heat. These cables have an aluminium core because aluminium is a very very good conductor of electricity. So typically metals are lustrous, hard, have high density, high tensile strength, high melting and boiling points and are good conductors of heat and good conductors of electricity. Here's a past paper question. Transition elements such as iron and copper are metals. Two of the properties of these metals are that they're malleable and ductile. Malleable means it can be hammered into shape. Ductile means it can be drawn out into a wire. Write about some of the other properties of metals. Well, there's three marks for this question, so we'd be expected to mention three properties of metals. I'll say that uh, metals have high melting points. They are good electrical conductors and are hard. As you can see there's a great number of possible choices here. Pretty much all of them are on the specification. The ones which actually aren't on the specification are sonorous or ring when hit and also these rather specialist properties for example that they make basic oxides when they react with oxygen. This part of the specification is rather open-ended. It says explain why metals are suited to a given use data will be provided. This is uh, leading you to this kind of question where they give you a table of properties of various metals and then ask you which metal is the most suitable for a particular use um, with you to comment upon the information in the table. So here's a typical question. Metals have useful properties. Look at the table. It shows some of the properties of five metals. Well, we're given five metals and information about their density, their melting point, their relative hardness, and their electrical and thermal conductivity and we're asked which metal has the lowest density 
choose from the table. Let's have a look. The density is this column. The lowest density is the one with the smallest number, which is this one. So the answer to this question will be zinc. And what's the relative thermal conductivity of cobalt? So we look along the cobalt line for the relative thermal conductivity, which is here. So the answer to this one is 1.0. And more on the same question. Look at the diagram. It shows an electrical wire. Copper is the most suitable metal from the table to make electrical wires. Explain why using information from the table. Well, let's have a look. We're told about the density. That's going to be irrelevant, as is the melting point. The relative hardness is irrelevant, but this part here, the relative electrical conductivity, is going to be useful. And we can see that copper here has got the highest relative electrical conductivity. So we'll write that in our answer. It has the highest relative electrical conductivity. Note in the answer to that last part, you have to say it's got the highest electrical conductivity or indeed a high electrical conductivity or a good conductor of uh, electricity, but not just that it's a good or the best conductor because there was heat conductivity given in the table as well. So you have to mention about it being an electrical conductor. Next we learn about the bonding in a metal. We've learned about two types of bonding so far in this module. We've learned about ionic bonding and covalent bonding. Here's a third kind, metallic bonding. The atoms of metals are packed very closely together in a regular arrangement as shown in this diagram. However, the atoms form ions where one or two of the outer electrons are allowed to roam from one atom to another atom. We call these free electrons. These electrons are of course negatively charged and they attract the positively charged ions by strong electrostatic attractions. Because these electrostatic attractions which comprise these metallic bonds are so strong it takes a lot of energy to separate the metal ions from each other and therefore these metals have got high melting and boiling points because of strong metallic bonding. Finally in this tutorial we have to learn about superconductors and some of the uses and benefits of superconductors. A superconductor is an element, an alloy or a compound that will conduct electricity with little or no resistance below a certain critical temperature. And these temperatures are very low. They're around the sort of temperatures of liquid nitrogen or liquid oxygen. Superconductors are used in very powerful electromagnets such as might be used on this monorail train. Very strong magnets are also used in these MRI machines for taking body scans. And very strong magnets are also used in this Large Hadron Collider. Another use of superconductors is in almost loss-free transmission of electricity. Typically power stations use these overhead wires here in this bottom picture to transmit electricity but a certain amount is lost through resistance. Uh, the resistance creates heat which loses the electricity. These thinner superconducting wires which are cooled by liquid gases, allow the electricity to travel large distances um, with very, very little loss of electricity. You need to learn these three facts, these three benefits of superconductors, that they allow loss-free power transmission, super-fast electronic circuits because of the lack of uh, resistance, and also allow you to make very powerful electromagnets.